All right, folks, this is Alonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop, with another, another legendary interview for the podcast. My man, Mr. K-Day himself, the Mac Attack, Greg Mac. What's up with you, Doc? Alonzo! What up? People don't know, man. You're the reason that we were successful. You, people don't know. Let's tell them. Let's tell them. Let's tell them. We know what, Doc. It was a team, it was a team effort, man, because... Uh, we're going to go back for a minute. We're going to go back. We're going to pat you on the back in just a second. But right. when, when I met you, I had just shut the Eve after dark down. And I was nervous as shit. Police cut, they gave me a hard time. Old man shut the Eve down. I moved to do those. I moved to do those about, I was opening to do those right when I met you. You just came to California. Mm -hmm. I, I always give her, give her her props because she still helped me out today. Rochelle Lucas, my, who was my sales rep, Said this guy's coming in from Texas. He's going. He's probably going to be the new program director. You need to meet him. And we went out. We hung out. Went to lunch. And uh, we ain't been. We ain't ate a lunch together since then. But that's all right. We made history in the meantime. Okay. And we we hit it off. You saw what I was doing, and you immediately. Uh, you got it. You got it. And between what I was doing in the streets and what you was doing on the airwaves, gave the West Coast hip hop a foundation. Uh, I think it was a perfect storm, just like this, this, this situation with the COVID and the, and the, uh, the George Floyd situation was a perfect storm of events that led us to where we are right now. And I, I, I set it up, and I'm giving it to you, because you, ha you see, we both shared the same history, but you had a different seat than I did. Now, for your seat, what did you see? Well, you know, I didn't, I was real naive to, uh, LA and what was going on in the streets and uh, you know all I knew was Uncle Jam's army was kicking ass and I wanted to uh, be a part of that and they didn't want me to be a part of it and so I said well I'm a, I've always been one of those kind of people that you know you can tell me no but you ain't gonna stop me right and, uh, I just got blessed to be able to run into you and of course you know you uh, introduced me to Dr. Dre and uh, we figured out how I could help you get your venue happening, do those. And, uh, and, and I, I could have access to the streets. And so it just kind of all worked out, you know, just kind of all worked out. You know, when, when you, uh, before you came to town, I was paying to bring acts to Eva at the Dark and do those, whatever, or Eva at the Dark actually. And you started giving me acts. You like, you gave me uh, Jermaine Stewart and Climax and I think one situation happened, man. New huh? New edition? New edition? New edition. I was saving that for later. Uh, <laughs> Kurt, we, I mean, you brought LL Cool J to do those when nobody else would mess with him. And he got booed at do those. People don't, people don't understand that. He wasn't always the lovable cat. You know, in the beginning, he caught hell at Compton. Okay? Mm -hmm. He caught hell at Compton. Um, don't, I don't know what happened. Now here's, here's a bit of history that was really crazy. When LL came to do those was the first time I did not, I was not on duty that night. I left because Wrecking Crew had his first show up in Sacramento. So we didn't, we did, I wasn't there. I set it up. I think I might've hired somebody else to do the sounds. My girl collected the money. LL was there and I called back that night to see what happened. She said, oh man, they didn't like him at all. They booed him. He, uh, you know, I think he had on some blue or red. I don't know. He should have had on, if he had on blue, that might have been That's the problem. That's why they booed him. <laughs> huh? That's why they booed him. They he booed him. Blue. He became there wearing blue or something like that. And he was talking all this high powered stuff and nobody was checking for him, man. And it, it, it made for an interesting event. And I, that was short. at that time, that's when Wrecking Crew was taking off with records and touring, and that's why I left Dudos. And um, but nonetheless, man, up until then, dude, we was killing Big Six, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you had us on the radio. We're doing the, the traffic jams. Now, where'd you get that idea from? Now, see, here's the thing. That well, the traffic jam. Uh, I wanted to do something different in the afternoon. People on their way home, and so, and I should have trademarked that name, right? Yeah. Um, but because all radio stations use it now. A lot of stuff I did, a lot of stations use it now, which is all cool, it's great. Um, what we did is, uh, because I wanted to create uh, something to go up against Uncle Jam's army. And uh, uh, I even tried stealing Bobcat away, but Bobcat, you know, he, he was loyal to his crew, 
but he said, you know, why don't you call yourself the Mix Masters? Now, this was after what we had gotten going because before the Mix Masters, it was Dre and Yella. And so I'd asked Alonzo, I said, look, man, um, you know, I need some DJs. He said, well, use mine. I said, are they any good? Are they good? You know, Alonzo said, I think they're the best. Okay, let me hear them. And uh, so I remember Dre and Yella coming up to the station with their cassette and, uh, and they let me hear it. I was like, oh my Lord. I, it wasn't really a mix, it was a song. It was a 30 minute song. Right. Where, Cause you know, in your garage in the back, cause I went over there a few times, hung out with the fellas. They had the multi-track. I think you had what, an eight track? Four track, four track, four, four, four track. Okay, uh, it sounded like eight. But they would, you know, Dre would actually lay the beat down and then he'd do the mixes over the beat. It, it was just, it was a production. I never heard nothing like it. So we put it on the air. It was an instant, instant hit. And so I made a deal out with Lonzo. I said, look, station ain't going to give me no money to pay y'all. But they'll allow me to promote your dudos. And so that's kind of how it started. You know, I would say, oh, yeah, don't forget to check out Dre and Yell at Dudos this Friday, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you know, a lot of the groups, you know, I was a music director at the time, so obviously they wanted to be my friend, but they would always ask me, you know, hey, can we do a promotion with you guys? Can we do a promotion? So we started making them 1580K day promotions. So we, you know, uh, would bring the groups out and perform for you. And we even took it a step further. If you remember, we started broadcasting live. Right. Uh, Friday Night Live is what we called it. Right. Uh, and it just exploded, man. The place was packed. It was wall to wall. Me and Lonzo was just sitting over grinning. <laughs> you know, we was just like, yes, yes, we'd have made it happen. You know, we we just uh, it was just you know huge, hugely successful. The pro only problem we had is because Dudos, for those that maybe aren't from LA, Dudos was in a blood territory. And so a lot of the Crips wanted to go see us, but they weren't going to go to do those. So we had to start moving Friday Night Live around the World on Wheels and uh, Sherman Square, Casa Camino Real. Uh, you know, Sherman Square we'd go to because the Hispanic crowd didn't want to go anywhere else. The Casa was kind of neutral territory. 321 Club, if you remember. Right, right. We did that because that was for the white people that wouldn't go to none of the other people, right. the other places. So everywhere we went, it was for a different race, uh, basically. And uh, uh, I just owe that all to you, man. When, when Dre and Yella, they became so popular, as you know, that they decided that they want to focus, focus more on their music. And yeah. uh, so I think we were together only, what, a year or two? Maybe two, maybe two. Because um, we started taking off, uh, surgery and juice started taking off while we were at Dudo's. We started getting more gigs out of town and it became more profitable for me to hop mm -hmm. on a plane and go do three or four shows in Texas, Louisiana, than to sit here and promote a show, promote a party. So, uh, and then we'd still be back home on the week, so doing, uh, by Monday, we'd go out on Friday, Thursday or Friday, mm -hmm. do, uh, go to Texas, Louisiana, wherever, wherever they booked us at, do three or four shows, come back home with a pocket full of money on Monday morning. <laughs> and do it again the following weekend. So it was an interesting time for us, man. But you know, I I um I gotta ask you something. I gotta ask you something because one of the first things, one of the first people I was talking about this on my syndicated show, the Greg Mack show. You know, we heard in about twenty something cities, but we I was talking on there because I said one of the first friends I made when I came to LA was Barry White. Okay. I came to a party, Ray Parker Jr. Uh, uh, was opening up a Mayor Ray Khan Studios. And uh, when I got there, I was talking to Ray Parker Jr. and Barry White. I'm already sitting here like, oh my God, oh my God. And so I started talking to him and Barry White just started laughing at me because I, uh, and maybe and this is the question where I'm going to it with you is because I still kind of had a Texas accent a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I was very kind of naive to the ways of, Los Angeles, and he just, he said, man, you're like a breath of fresh air. So I wanted to ask you, when you first met me, I know your homegirl said, you know, you got this guy coming from Texas. So what did you think, man, when you first met me? I, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. Be honest. You and them cowboy boots, man. You had that, he had that little <laughs> Eldorado, okay? You had that big yellow, he had, he had the, the, the old school Eldorado, not, not the, uh, he had that, uh, the 76, was 76, 77? Yellow on, is it yellow on yellow or yellow on white? 
Yep. Man, I don't know what you're talking about with that. I remember the El Dorado man in the cowboy boots, dude. That's what I remember. Okay, the El, El Dorado in the cowboy boots. Uh, and um, and uh, I didn't think nothing about it. Did you, I think you had a cowboy hat, if I ain't mistaken, Greg. Uh, <laughs> there might have been one in the room. People don't know that I'm really a country boy. I'm a country boy at heart. I love my country. Well, but, I never knew that. I thought you just passed through the country because there was something to do. No, nah, man. How long you been on the radio? 43 years. Wow. Wow. I ain't mad, Doc. People say, I guess at this time, whatever we've done, we've done it 35, 40 years, man. I've been in the club business 40 years. So I retired last year from the club business. I started doing this YouTube stuff. So, you know, I still in, in entertainment. They say entertainment, uh, probably about, yeah, damn near 45 years, but uh, club 40. Um, when um, the Mixed Masters took off, and you started having success, and K-Day became the number one radio station for hip hop, man. How did that make you feel? I'm, I remember one, I, I, stop, stop, I'm sorry. I remember one time we had a, a situation at, uh, at Skate Man, and I think Roger, I was doing doodos, Roger snuck into Skate Man, mm -hmm. and uh, they had brought in, I think it was Midnight Star, Mm -hmm. I never forget. You got on the phone. I told you what happened. You got on the phone to Joe Busby, or whoever whoever was in charge, and you said something to him. And it was funny because people don't realize Skate Man and Dudos are basically in the same lot. If yeah. you jump off a Dudos roof, you're gonna land in Skate Land parking lot. Okay. Right. Right. And the limo went to Skate Land first. Came out of Dudos. I'm watching it happen. Came out of Skate Lands parking lot. Man, the U-turn in Central came right back into Dudos, okay? And I'm like, dude, this dude got power. <laughs> I remember you making that phone call. And you said some things to that person, whoever it was. You want the records played, whatever the case may be. And it changed the whole direction. Like, damn, look at Greg. I ain't mad at you. Well, you know, here's the thing. You are the first DJ to play such and such artist or song or whatever, and then they go and do something for somebody else. Right. Right next door to you. Oh hell no. Right. And uh, and I was known to you know, uh, um, you know, pull people's records uh, if they disrespected is the way I looked at it. Um, it wasn't like just being mean hearted, but it's like, come on now, you know, because if I pull your record off. You know, and you know, I, you say, how did I feel about it? We were just having fun, Lonzo. Yeah. I wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking that we were making history. I wasn't thinking like that. You know, I think if we were thinking like that, we probably wouldn't have made history. Right. Um, I, I was just having fun. It was, you know, I was working from, you know, nine in the morning till two in the morning uh, every day, uh, you know, just, just having a ball. It was my life. You know, I lived it. I, I breathed it, you know, and, and it was fun meeting all the New York cats that were coming out. I'm glad, uh, you, said that. I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. it used to be a, a issue because K-Day was always open to everybody and New York wasn't as open to us as K-Day was to everybody else. How mm -hmm. did you feel about that? Well, about what? Being well, open to... The, I was one of the first guys that ever got played on WBLS in uh, in New York because turn off lights could not be denied. Okay, mm -hmm. but everybody else caught hell. Nobody else could get any kind of love out of out of out of, out of the um, out of East Coast stations. Oh, I just looked at it like, okay, you guys need to work harder. That's the way I looked at it. I mean, the East Coast has a different vibe. You know that it's even today has a different vibe. There's a lot of West Coast artists that'll never get airplay out there. Probably more now than ever. But back then. You know, we welcomed East, West, South. You know, we had Miami, you know, guys, Chicago. We didn't care. I mean, if it was a hit, it was a hit, it was a hit. Okay. But in uh, uh, L.A. is more receptive. New York is more sophisticated. And, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but their, their type of music is a little more sophisticated than uh, Los Angeles. I remember being in the car I think I told you this story before. Uh, I had Run DMC. We were we were going somewhere to do something, and uh, we were listening. And surgery came on, okay. and and Run said, "You know, man, that 
that West Coast music makes me nervous. <laughs> it just makes me nervous. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, I can't explain it. It's just, I'm not, I just can't feel it, you know? And so what that told me was that's what New York feels. They, they really weren't feeling, you know, uh, the, the type of stuff that we were putting out on the uh, West Coast. I mean, you, dude, I remember we first dropped Surgery and Juice. Um, you, I remember you telling me, hey, man, when you get finished, bring it to me. Okay, cool. And I, okay, okay, here, check out, here, here is a cassette of mm -hmm. Surgery or Juice, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I remember one time before we got back on the freeway, that shit was carted up and on the radio, okay? Don McMillan got mad at <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't got the parts made. We got records. People looking to buy the record, but they can't buy it because we ain't processed it yet. You played the, you played from, we, that's when you had the high bias cassettes. No, they don't know about these the TDK high bias cassettes that would cost you like six bucks a piece, but they were super clean and you could actually dub something from this and you would dub um, uh, one of my records, Surgery or Juice to a cart man put on the radio and it was a hit and we we was like, six days from having our first record made. But uh, that, that was a time, man, that, you know, you, you, can't re you, you can't recreate that, dude. My philosophy was that even though there were some bigger East Coast records probably that the record companies were pushing, um, I always felt like, you know what, this, is, this West Coast record is not that bad. And I, I said, you know, if I play a West Coast artist record, they're gonna go tell a hundred family members who are gonna go tell another hundred, who go and tell another hundred. I'm gonna have all those people listening to K-Day. There was a strategy there uh, in the beginning. And you know, and, and I've said this a hundred times, you didn't have to pay me to play your record. If you had a good record, uh, I played it. And you didn't have to make an appointment, even though we had music days, I think it was Mondays or Tuesdays. I never knew that. <laughs> I never knew that. <laughs> Shut up, man. You never paid me. I no, 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 I never knew you got a music day. Well, that was when we met as a music day. I, and, did I, uh, I met, yeah. We met hanging out. Yeah. We met hanging out, uh, so, I, to my knowledge. OK, that was 47 years ago. I so. would listen to what the record companies wanted us to play. This is our new single. Whatever. You, you, you know, know, it was uh, playing B-sides, album cuts. Right, right. <laughs> right. See, and people don't understand, man, back then, Record companies would do that. I remember I was, uh, another situation. I was working with uh, I was with uh, K working with uh, K uh, K Ace, and I was in the station with Easy Wig, and he played the Tina Marie album in its entirety. And the people from Motown had a fit. What are you <laughs> doing? What are you doing? You can't do that. And this is a badass album. No, you can't do that. And I understand it now. You know, you was they was kind of uh, unveiling the the whole gift before they wanted everybody to have it. Man, I pissed off the whole record industry. Um, there was a lot of people that didn't like me. Uh, they grew to like me because, you know, uh, we, we played all their music. We just may not focus on that single. Right. You know, uh, give you an example, salt and Pepper when they brought in Tramp. I said, Tramp is good, but I like Push It, that B-side. Okay. Oh man, ain't nobody. Uh, well, uh, man, I played that. It was about six months and finally caught on with the other stations. Uh, same thing with J.J. Fad, uh, even Lisa Lisa. A lot of people don't know that we played a lot of freestyle, but uh, her song, I Wonder If I Take You Home, Columbia Records wouldn't even put it out. They wouldn't put it out in the States. They said, nah, we're going to break her overseas. And uh, her manager, uh, Steve, the late uh, Steve, uh, he uh, had brought me a cassette. He said, man, you know, I really want to you know, do something with this record, but they won't put it out, you know, and it was, I wonder if I take you home. I said, can I play it? <laughs> you know, and uh, we know the, the, you know, that thing went to number one. Uh, my biggest fan, Lonzo, uh, and he used to come to all my birthday parties, was Prince. What? what a lot of people don't know is that uh, I had a direct connect with Prince's record label, and I also had a direct connect with his pressing plant. Mm -hmm. So I always would steal his music before anybody in the world would get it. Now, most people would get a cease and desist. Prince, Prince, you know, he, he would just have somebody call me and, you know, whatever. And uh, his gift to me was when Vanity Six came out and he sent Vanity over in a camisole, a very see-through camisole. <laughs> 
he said, she came in and she said, uh, Prince just said, you know, he really appreciates what you do, you know, and he loves you to death. And I was like, oh, okay. And I'm sitting here trying, I'm sitting here trying not to look down. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I happened to fall through K-Day that day. Were you there that day? I fell through K-Day that day in the limousine in front of the station. And it was, and she, dude, it was like, it was like a commercial. I was going into the station and I said, that's fucking vanity. Oh, shit. I'm not lying, okay? She, she pulled up, it was a white limo. She asked right. me, wanted to the station. She wanted to go. She wanted to go in for something. Maybe use the restroom. I don't know. But she told me to, uh, could have her driver come back for something. No problem, beautiful. No problem. No bullshit. I was there that day. I was there when she came through. And you know, she got. She had them eyes, man. That come, them come hither eyes. That look. She just made a man feel like you might get it, but she know you ain't got nothing coming. Okay. She just had that vibe yeah. about her, man. I was a beautiful woman, dude. She, she was, was a beautiful. Yeah. Woman. Very sweet lady, you know, huh? very, very intelligent, very sweet lady. You know, she went on to become a preacher and stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. What, can you say, man? Away, so what are you doing now, man? I, I know what you're doing, but tell them what you're doing these days. You know, I um, just signed a deal recently. Nobody knows about this uh, to finally get the 1580 K-Day documentary done. Okay. Uh, the Conweiser brothers, if you remember, they did that movie, The Evers, Miss Evers Boys, won a lot of awards for it. It's going to be a very big Your voice went down, Greg. Greg, your voice went down. You, I'm sorry? Your, your voice went down. You were loud for you, you were louder a minute ago. Oh, OK. I don't know what that is. I'm talking the same level. Can you okay, still hear me? OK, talking about that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, we're underway with that. Uh, that's going to be very big. Uh, and the Greg Mack syndicated radio show, which is heard by about 8, eight to 10 million people every week. Um, you know, which is basically K Day on the radio, and, and <laughs> you know, you got your your I call tribute station in town, the K Day that's on, uh, <laughs> but it's not the real thing. Uh, right. But the Greg Mack show is is pretty close as it gets to uh, what you used to hear on K Day. So if you really want to hear what K Day sounds like, you got to hear the show, um, and a few other you know film projects. Uh, almost finished with the book. You know, all the stuff that you've done already, I'm trying to catch up on. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just real optimistic. There's some other things I guess I really can't talk about. But uh, right now, life is good, man. I'm so blessed and happy and, uh, uh, you know, want to get married again one day. And <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, that's, that's the struggle. And I don't know if you can relate, but that's the struggle when you do what we do. It is a very time consuming, uh, yeah. uh, got to have a uh, drive that uh, the only person that is in front of you is God. And, you know, I, I, you know, I understand it's supposed to be God, your wife and work, but with me, it's always been God and work. Yeah. And uh, that doesn't go too well. <laughs> so, and I'm still that way. I've, I've always, I tell people now, you know, people that I meet, you know, I just say, look, as long as you understand, I have a wife and her name is job. And yes. so you're not going, you can be the side piece, but you're not going to be, you're not going to be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm driven, you know, we're getting up there in age, man. There's things I got to get done here. Yeah. I understand that. And I want to get those things done so I can go set my ass down. Okay. I got it, Doc. I got it, man. So, dude, I thank you for the interview, man. I appreciate it. We could, we could, dude, we could be on this for another hour or so. We probably man, we could be on it till tomorrow. We got a lot of stories we ain't even touched. Yeah, we ain't talked about Texas yet. <laughs> you talking about backstage Texas? Backstage Texas. We ain't talking about backstage Texas. You know, I was talking about her one time during some interview or something. She actually hit me up like, what? That's really, that's really rude of you. <laughs> <laughs> she was happy to be around us. Uh, miss me, baby. Miss me. Hey, you know what? It was one girl, man. What was that girl that she played in uh, Last Dragon? Who was, what was her name? Last Dragon? You talking? That was Vanity. No, 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 no. The, she, no, I'm sorry. The, the Last Dragon, uh, she was on the other side with Show Enough. Okay, the sister, she was fine as heck. She was hanging out with us for a while. Uh-huh. And you knew her because we, um, you brought her around. Right. I can't yeah. think of this chick's name, man. 
my cat, uh, my cat is an outdoor cat. And so like, it's really hot where I'm at today. So I brought her inside, you know, when it's really hot. Okay. She keeps meowing if you can. I don't know if you can hear it. I can't hear it. <laughs> like, I want to go outside. You're probably being post production though. Say hi to Lonzo, say hi. <laughs> Pretty cat. All right, Doc. Much love to you, man. I thank you for taking this time out to do an interview with me today and uh, sharing some of this history, dude. Uh, more power to you. Stay corona free. <laughs> do your thing, folks. In the meantime, Mr. Greg Mack, the Mack you know, attack, boy, y'all. When you, when you listen to me on the wave now, I do it right here at my desk. Do you really? I do not go into the station at all. Wow. Okay. I'm live, I'm live from Palmdale. That's where I'm I, I, I thought you good on driving gas, too. All right, folks, don't forget oh, to yeah. subscribe and uh, notify. This is Lions of the Godfather West Coast here, but with my man Greg Mack, the master behind the, the air, master behind the airwaves of Los Angeles hip hop. He turned it into a whole other genre, turned K Day from a regular station to being one of the most powerful stations, most influential stations in hip hop back in the day, folks. Much love to you, Greg. Thanks for having me on, Lions. Stay cool, man. We out of here. Peace. All right.